This place is amazing. She's featured the Crow's Nest Highway, Highway 3, uh, from the Crow's Nest Pass, coming through Hosmer and Fernley, and then ending up in Morrison. Oh, okay. So she, she starts off there. You see the, you see the name down there? Yeah. They were big makers of um, blacksmithing. Blacksmithing equipment and... And so did you bring this from England or did yes, you...? Yes, we did. When we, when we moved in 2004, we had one sea can oh, okay. with our household. Yeah. And we had a second sea can with our shop. Ah, oh, okay. The upshot of it was we thought if we brought our equipment, we, we were familiar with it. Yeah. We didn't know how easier difficult it would be to get the equipment here. Yeah. And the third factor was, was people might say to you, oh yes, I'd love to buy that from you. When you ask them to show up with the money, yeah. it don't happen. So yeah. we had a 40 foot sea cap. Yeah. That's and crazy. We, we packed a, the, the space yeah. with uh, bags of coke. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. a good idea. Huh? Yeah, so that, that kept us in the coat for a few years. Yeah. Across the highway, down the Stevenson Road, there are still beehive coke ovens that were built probably in the early 1900s yeah. to turn the coal that they mined here into coke. Huh. So that's my great grandfather. Really? Outside his original shop in the village where he was born and raised. Um, and he did his apprenticeship with a local blacksmith and wheelwright in that village. And where what village was that? Uh, it's a village called Ashton Canes, which is in uh, Gloucestershire. Oh, okay. Um, and then, like a lot of guys, he became a journeyman. Yeah. So, he looked to go where the work was. So this old thatch barn there is the shop that they worked out of. Oh wow. And you can just see the sign, it says H.H. Barrett, which was Henry Hungerford Barrett. Huh. So that's, that's my great grandfather. Yeah. And the little guy, that's my grandfather. Oh wow. And as I was saying, they were, they were farm cart wagon builders, oh, okay, rights, yeah. and blacksmiths. As the business grew, he built this shop down the road from that one. Okay. And again, that's him there, and that's with the horse there, the little, little guy's my grandfather. That's and you can see the, the name says H.H. Barrett, coach, cart, and wagon builder. Huh. And there's the various things that they did and stopped. Excellent. And he, he could, he was one of these people, and my grandfather was too, that were multi-skilled. Yeah. He, he, had, he could do his own sign writing. Oh, okay. So I remember the blacksmith shop was just off the picture there. Yeah. Because when I was probably about the age of your guys here, yeah. I can remember our blacksmiths. Oh, shop really? Yeah. And the guy working there. Yeah. Ever since I was a little guy, probably. 15 years old, my father and grandfather had been using a, a horse felt like this one. Yeah. Um, I have it set up with a little rack for lips and bobs, and I've got steel wool there. Well, that's a good idea. I mean, you can just quickly check what you're doing, hey? Well, yeah. Um, I'm a metric guy, mm -hmm. I can work in feet and inches, but nice. they tell me Canada's a metric country, so... Yeah, it's, our, it's half and half, we can't make our minds up. Well, somebody told me that the reason Canada is metric because there was a time when the states said, we're doing metric, so Canada said, oh my 
we go. Obviously. Yeah, yeah. That's and right. Stay like girl, whether they were just pulling. Their they were just forward. kidding. Yeah. The hardest thing to find is anvils. I've got a search set up on Kijiji, right. so anytime an anvil's listed, oh, it okay. and anything that's half decent, oh. See the way these work, boys? It's like there's a ram, right? This is like an arm that rocks back and forth, and then these are the dies. So this is. Remember, I was talking to you the other day about dies. No. We're talking about hardening. You don't remember that? Anyway, so these are all hardened. Remember I was saying you can punch holes like that? And so basically, so these are really hard. You can put mild steel in here, and then you just have to line it up right when you set it all up, and then you can just push it, and it, it just pops that hole right out. So you'll end up with a hole in the steel like that, and it just pushes, it's like, yeah, how Mora stamps their knives, just like that. So it's like a paper cutter for steel. People like us are more pleased to disseminate information because yeah. that's where we live. Yeah. We learn from other people. And it's, it's a natural chain of events. So yeah. Right? Yeah. All right guys, well I hope you enjoyed that. Hopefully it gave you a little taste of just how great it was to hang out with David in his forge. And again, check out their Facebook page, I Have The Needle Studio, and also their website, ferniforge.ca. Uh, David, thank you so much for your hospitality. Uh, it was just fantastic, I really hope to do it again. And thanks for watching guys, cheers.